already here with um, not your man and coffee, but just um, I just felt I needed to talk to you guys. You know, we got an election coming up and I see all the candidates out there and, you know, I hear what they say. I mean, I listen to most of them. I can't say I listen to all of them uh, pretty much because most of them are boring. Um, and then, you know, I've already heard our president talk many times. And I like the message that he has. And I like what he's done for us. I like the fact that I'm earning more money. I'm, you know, I uh, found some part-time work. I'm off of work right now because I have a, um, another blister that popped up on the bottom of my foot. And for those of you that don't know, you know, um, I've had a really bad bout with uh, osteomyelitis. And it's a really bad infection of the bones in the foot. And, you know, I could wind up having another amputation if I don't take care of this blister. So I'm still home. I'm not at work. <laughs> you know, I miss my job. I really do. I love it. I get to drive all kinds of exotic cars and also regular, you know, domestic cars. It's really cool. But, you know, I would have never had that opportunity. You know, for eight years, I never had that opportunity under our past president. You know, there were no jobs available for anybody over 60. You know, they didn't want to hire us. You know, and now they do because they realize, you know, we have we bring a lot to the table. You know, we have years of experience. You know, I was in management for 30 plus years. And, you know, we have a lot to bring to the table when it comes to just being an employee. That's all I am now. I'm not in any kind of management or supervisor position. I'm just I'm just a driver and I love it. But you know what? I never had that opportunity. Now I have it. Why? Because we have a booming economy. We have people out there that are willing to hire seniors. So praise God, you know, I'm able to do that. But I'm kind of diverting a little bit because I want to get back to the nitty gritty of what I want to talk about. This word right here, this Bible. You see, even when the president who's in office right now was getting ready to run, and we had, I forgot how many candidates running on the Republican ticket. I'm an independent, so I really don't care. I really didn't care who was running Democratic or Republican. But the one thing I did, I took each candidate and I took this word and I started weighing him against what God says a godly man or woman should be. How you can trust them. And I just wasn't seeing that, but I finally saw it in one candidate. And that's who we have for a president. Now I'm using the same Bible, guys, and this same word right here, you know, the one that says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You know, when they say they want to do something, it says something else. I mean, you know, I've heard candidates today that literally lie in their own debates. And they lie to each other, they lie to us. And, and, and I don't know about you, but God doesn't like that. God says, stare away from those people. You know, when they call themselves Christians, but they don't act like a Christian or they have no relationship with Jesus Christ, it says to not fellowship with them, period. Number one, I could never see myself fellowshipping with an Adam Schiff or a Nancy Pelosi or a, or a Jerry Nadler or, you know, um, what's the other guy, the, the, the angry Jew guy, uh, Chuck Schumer. I could never see myself fellowshipping and hanging out with those kind of people because I know they're phony balonies. I know they're hypocrites. Why? Because of this word and what they say measured up against this word. You see, they're ungodly. You know, we have people that believe that homosexuality is okay. It's even okay for a presidential candidate to run under that label. Or killing children is okay. Or taxing us again and taking all our money to pay for your extravagant, crazy ideas about how to get rid of our cars and our planes and our fortin cows and all this other stuff. You know what? Literally, just crazy people out there. And when you look at this Bible and you weigh it against what they say, you're going to find out that God speaks against them. He says to not have fellowship with them, not even to give them your time. So I don't know why half of the people give these people time. I really don't. But today, family, the one thing I do, and I've done for many years now, is I vote the Word of God. I vote for a candidate 
who cherishes this in his life. Now, we all make mistakes, you know. I mean, we've all stumbled. We've all, you know, said things we probably shouldn't have said or done things we probably shouldn't have done. But that doesn't make us any less a Christian because we run back to this word and ask Christ for forgiveness. And he does. Damn, I can't tell you how many times I've done it. Oh, mm. Oh, Pastor already said, damn, he's going to hell. <laughs> no, I'm not going to hell. You know what? God is a gracious God. But the one thing he's not gracious about are those who play church and play Christian. You know, well, I pray for people all the time. And how dare you contradict me or, or challenge me? I would challenge Nancy Pelosi because I know, you know, as a Catholic, their prayers are useless, most of them, especially hers, because she doesn't even go, you know. I know most of these people in, in organized religion, organized religion, that it's not worth the paper that their doctrine was written on, because they do, they follow a doctrine. They don't follow the Word of God, they follow a doctrine. You know, matter of fact, when I was in college, you know, the one class I, I almost failed, almost, I said, almost, I actually, passed the class with a C minus, which literally blew my GPA because I had straight A's up until I got that C minus and then my GPA went boom. But it was doctrines and bylaws. It was man-made philosophy based on the Word of God in order to run a quote religion. I'll tell you right now, it was the Assembly of Gods. And, and I didn't ascribe to it. I even told my professors, I don't like this class. This class is a bunch of hooey. You ought to take it out and stick to the word, you know. And I almost failed that class, but I needed it for my degree. So I had to pass it reluctantly. But you know, there's people out there today that don't care. They speak out one side of their mouth and do other things out the other side. You know, um, the Indians used to say they speak with a forked tongue. You know, a snake, that they were snakes because you couldn't trust a snake. You could pick a snake up and maybe it'll bite you, maybe it won't, but most likely it's gonna bite you, you know? I mean, we've often heard the story of the turtle and the scorpion. You know, no matter what, the scorpion stung the turtle, they both died. Why? Because the scorpion's a scorpion. That's what he does. Why are we thinking that, that politicians are any different than what they do? They, they studied hard in college to learn how to lie, ste steal, and cheat, and bamboozle their way into office, and then make you feel sorry if you don't vote for them. Well, you know what? I'm done with that. I'm done with the liars, the cheats, and the leakers. I'm done with the people who just throw you a sham story and expect you to vote for them. It's time for us Christians to break out this word and start looking at each person running for office today, whether it's local or federal, and weigh them out against the word of God. Are what they say kind of keeping in line with this? You know, our, our founding fathers used this in order to frame create the framework for our Constitution. Well, if it was good enough for the, um, for the Benjamin Franklins, the Thomas Jeffersons, the George Washingtons, the Sam Adams, the rest of them, it's good enough for me to lead and guide me in a decision over a candidate for a public office or a federal office, a government office. How about you? Are you willing to put the Word of God to the political test? I think you should. And you're going to find out that you'll vote for somebody you never thought of. I, I hope it's giving this president another four years because I enjoy having a job. I enjoy making extra money now. I enjoy being able to fund the ministry even more because I make more now because of a president who created jobs, got rid of all the, all the junk in order that our economy could be booming, you know. It wasn't the president before, you know, he had the worst job numbers ever, and he ought to just admit it. See, even there, that guy's, that cat's lying. He's lying to you. You know, he's like a snake in the grass. He's lying and hissing and that fork tongue, you're going crazy. He's been out of the limelight for quite a while, but man, when he says something, it's really stupid. 
<laughs> when most of these politicians say something, it's really stupid, you know? Gavin Newsom saying that our own governor saying, well, you know, the, uh, the government's not giving us enough money to handle this homeless problem. You know what, dude, you were given $1.2 billion to solve this homeless crisis a couple of years ago, and you've been sitting on that money in a bank account earning interest. I like to know why you lied to the Cal people of California, and you're looking for their vote? If I was, well, I'm a Californian, you'll never see my vote, ever, ever. Matter of fact, you and the rest of the Democrats, you guys gotta go. You know, it's time for you all to hit the road. It's time to us to have a California red wave because they at least use this word to govern their lives. And I know that they make mistakes, but don't you and I both. I'm not pointing a finger. You know, it's easy for them to point. And I know there's gonna be people out there that are gonna listen to this video and you're gonna point out the speck in my eye when you're neglecting to see the plank in yours. Remember, weigh it out against the word because I'm not gonna point out your faults because I know you got faults, I got faults. <laughs> but yet we're the family of God, you know? It says that we're supposed to love as a friend and brothers are born of adversity. You know, we have people in our lives that we hold dear and uh, cherish in our lives. But the one thing I don't hold dear and cherish in my life are politicians because they're lying, cheats and snakes. But you know what? If you want an office, start reading this, start living this, give your life to Christ and go in there as a Christian politician and you know what? You're probably going to get my vote. I don't care if you're Democrat. I don't care if you're an independent. I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're red, yellow, black, and white. As long as you are an American. Don't try to pull these shenanigans like the last president did, who is a Kenyan, and run for a public office and say you're an American. What a farce that was. And you know how I know? Because, you know, we had friends. I, I, well, I've been to Uganda, and, and they, all, they all told me, well, you know, he was born in Kenya. Now, if people in Uganda know about the Obamas, his mom and dad, what does that tell you? He lied. Today, family, use the word of God to measure up those people running for office. And I just had to say this. I'm sorry that I, I, I didn't mean to kind of like ramble on. But use the Bible when you vote. Use the word of God to measure them up and then give your vote to the candidate who follows this word as close as possible to the way you live your life as well. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. Linda and I and the rest of the staff here at Reaching Our City Ministries, we are praying for you that you make the right decision in 2020 and use this word in order to find the correct candidate for the office that they're running. God bless you guys and I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.